just tap. Okay. Thanks, Rishab. I'd like to speak to the conference manager for putting me after Eric. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. I feel like the ugly contestant after the bikini contest. So hi everyone, my name is Tony Tarr. I am the other Australian in the house. Um, Andrew's got the real Australian accent. First of all, I'd like to thank Rishab and his team, Prepe. You guys have done amazing, amazing things. Uh, and I think everyone here and at the developer workshop yesterday, um, we all, I think we all just want to thank you, Rishab, for putting 11 years uh, into this. You personally, 11 years. I, I told Rishab yesterday, he's got two kids, but his third one is uh, EOP Next, and it's, it's 11 years old. And, you know, we're all here because of, of, of them and the team. And, and um, yeah, you know, uh, echoing Eric's sentiments, a very heart, heartfelt thank you for, for all of the work that you guys have done. And then, obviously, this community, we kind of need to take this forward now. And um, what I'd like to speak to uh, everyone about today is mainly geared towards the, the other service providers. Um, a little bit of background about uh, uh, Claudia and myself. Uh, I started this company um, not more than a year ago, uh, less than a year ago. I came from corporate, used to work in a um, big mining company. Uh, for those of you who are from Australia, Andrew, you know, you know there's only two big mining companies and I worked for one of them. Uh, and obviously an SAP house and um, did that for about 15 years and uh, realized that um, you know, at the end of my corporate life, I, I, I realized and I, and I thought about that there has to be a better way for companies to implement ERP systems. And not just ERP systems, you know, ecosystems, business system, business ecosystems, because ERP is just one part of it. And I think one of the slides before mentioned, you know, we've got ERP, we've got CRM, we've got information management, we've got business warehouse and, and, and that sort of thing. And, and it is an ecosystem for, uh, for, for a company. So I started the company really just to help small businesses, just to go out and, and, and give them some advice on what their IT strategy should be like, you know, what, what, what they should be looking out for, because small businesses are, are quite vulnerable to vendors coming in saying, oh, you need this, you know, like, your yeah, Salesforce. Oh, Salesforce can be used for inventory management and that sort of thing. And they, they really don't try to understand um, understand the business. So, you know, our, our, our catchphrase is your business systems simply. Right? Now, I could change business systems. I, I like ecosystem. I might change it when I go back. But it, it is just that. It, it is really going into a business and telling them, guys, your system doesn't have to be complex. Your system doesn't have to be a myriad of Excel spreadsheets, Google Docs, and, and, and all of these things where you've got to then build a team to interface everything. It doesn't have to be that. But for a very long time, I wasn't able to really find anything out there. And, and I think everyone's kind of gone through a similar journey where we looked and looked and looked and looked, and then, whoa, all of a sudden, we get introduced to EOP Next, and, 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 a, and then we see the light. We see, you know, we say, oh, there's the answer. I saw X-Men on the, on, on the plane who, who, who have seen X-Men when, uh, uh, when he goes, I've just seen the answer. <laughs> when he touched Xavier, right? Anyway, anyway. So, so that, that was my defining moment. I, I, I said, wow, this, this is it. Um, and we've all gone through all of the different products. We've all gone through, you know, every... Uh, everyone who's presented as I said that we've seen so many different products and there really isn't anything out there for um, for the community for for the, for the business community so we use ERP next right now exclusively I think initially we tried to be product agnostic and we still want to be but right now the, the, there isn't any other product that um, even comes close to to uh, to what we want to give our clients. I was just um, explaining to one of the guys, um, I was talking to 
uh, another software company and I asked them to give me their pricing model. And she couldn't. Oh, it depends on how many modules you want. It depends on how many employees you have. It depends on the phase of the moon. Right? She wasn't able, so, so I said to her, what, how can I sell your product if you can't even tell me what your pricing model is? So I think as a community, as this ERP Next community grows, as this Spratback community grows, I think as service providers, we need to, one, help each other out, yes, and we've talked about that today, but I think we also need to help the businesses out because they're the guys that are paying our salaries, they're the guys that are, you know, funding, funding all of this. So we need to help them out. And so today I'm going to try to impart some of my experiences, some of my knowledge to would-be service providers. And, and I think we need lots of them. Eric's team's doing great work, right? Um, I spoke to, and I'm sorry I've forgotten your name, I, I spoke to someone over lunch who's, who, who's thinking of starting her own. And I think that's great. And I want to tell as many people about not just EOP Next, but you can, you know, with technology nowadays, you can start your own business as an individual, right? And help as many businesses as you can. So just, just, some, just some things that um, I've learned. Uh, so with every client, it's a relationship. As much as we don't want it to be, it's a relationship, okay? And like any good relationship, the, the best ones are usually formed in a marriage. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's why we commit, right? Okay. So anyway, you, you make a commitment to the client. That's basically it. So for a successful relationship, what do you need? These are the four things that, um, that I think we need. Okay? Um, and I'll, and I'll, go, I'll go through uh, through each one of them. First and foremost, Business assessments, and, and you can call it whatever you want, right? You can call it business assessments, you can call it requirements analysis, you can call it whatever. Okay, I just call, we just call it business assessments. And then business assessment is exactly what it is. You go in and then you figure out and find out what your clients are doing. There's no point in coming in and saying, hey, I've got ERP next. Use it. They're just going to look at you and say, and then? You had to move, and then. <laughs> so we spend quite a bit of time understanding our clients. Um, we go in, we actually interview uh, individual, uh, the key individuals. And the key individuals are the people who are usually the owner of a process. And in small businesses, you could have one person who owns multiple processes, and that's just how they work. But in understanding that, you then realize what sort of solutions and what sort of technologies that they need. You know, that, that part of it should come, um, should come after it. So these are the kind of steps that we, we follow when we, um, uh, when we do the business assessments. And, and you guys, you know, what, do what suits you best or do what suits your clients best. But this is typically the... the the phases that we follow. First is obviously assess the current state. What are they doing now? How are they doing it? Are they doing it well? Are they doing it on paper and pen? Are they doing it on spreadsheets? And, and that sort of thing, okay? It's usually all the same. It's all paper and pen and spreadsheets. Secondly, help them define what it is they're trying to achieve. Usually when they come, and come to you and, and, and say, I want to implement a system or something, they want everything. They want everything. CRM, Inventory management, you know, reporting, everything. So you tell them to take a step back and say, look, we know you want everything, but what is it that you're trying to solve? What is it that you're trying to achieve? And get them to explain it to you in non-technical terms, okay? I want to reduce whatever, my workforce. I want to cut costs. I want to da-da-da, all right? Because they will always come back to that. They will always come back to... to assess and measure whether or not they've met those, those um, objectives. So once you know what they do, once you know what they want to achieve or want to solve, then 
do a fit gap. And this is where the customization comes in. You know, you know what the solution does, you know what ERP Next does, the community will tell you what ERP Next does, but it's the whole 80-20 rule, right? So ERP Next for most of your clients is gonna cover off 80% of the requirements, and then the 20% you go and figure out how to do it yourself, or go into the, the forum, get all your friends to like it, send a box of chocolates, and it gets done. Okay, so step one, two, three. Step number four, also very important. Prioritize and plan. Again, when you come out of step three, it's gonna be a big laundry list. Even if you tell them to cut it, they'll still give you a big laundry list. Help them call it. So the appetite for different businesses, uh, for each business is different, okay? Um, and it all depends on their resources, it all depends on uh, how much they're willing to spend and that sort of thing. So help them prioritize and plan, okay? Identify the things that they really need now that's critical and then just put it in a high level plan. Use the Gantt chart to help them plan it out, okay? And then finally, grab your team together, execute and then monitor and, and, and measure. So measure um, the, you know, the progress of the deployment and that sort of thing, but at the end of it, measure whether or not they've actually achieved their goals and objectives. Um, and, th and this is, this is um, a key, key step for us as a service provider. Uh, you know, we don't want to be known as a product peddler. We want to be known as a, um, a company that really wants to uh, come in and, and build long-term relationships uh, with our clients, okay, and, and, and grow with them. Okay, this is the long, you know, we can debate about this for a while, but how you deploy and, 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 and how you um, roll out your, your, your projects. The Agile debate about Agile versus Waterfall. Okay, uh, for those who don't know, Agile, very simply put, pump out as quickly as possible. Waterfall is much slower because you gotta do design, and you get approvals, and then you gotta build and test, and so that's it, exactly what it is. So, um, which would you use? Who uses more Agile service providers? More Agile, more Waterfall? Eric? More Agile? Agile? Everyone's Agile? Okay. Um, we have a, a, a bit of a different approach to it. We really, I think both has its merits and still has its merits. I think Waterfall still has its merits. But as a yardstick, what we do is we make an assessment on the maturity levels of the organization. And what we found, um, and what I found being in ERP for 15 years as well, is that um, there are typically four areas that you would look at, you would assess you would assess on their maturity levels. And those four areas are the industry that they're in, the company, the maturity of the company, their business processes and the organization. So the industry that they're in, you know, is it a tr traditional industry or is it like one of those new sharing economy or, or disruptive industries, yeah? Is it a company that's been around for a while? Are they a startup? Are they like um, a Dom's company who's been around for a while? Are their business processes well known, well documented? How mature is it? Okay, you know, do they have everything in someone's head, or do they have it all on a uh, all documented and 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 known? And the organisation itself, what's their what's their culture like? Are they a good mix? Do they have a mix of millennials versus oldies like me versus you know? So. We really take a look at all of this, and what, what we've kind of found is that if the maturity levels are low, push the product out as fast as possible, okay? Because they don't know what they don't know. But once they see it, then they figure it out. Then they go, oh, okay, it works like that. Now I can tell you what I do, because I've seen it, right? But when the maturity level is a little bit more um, established, 
we tend to go the, the waterfall approach. The reason being is because they will tell you what they want. They will define your test cases. They will define their business cases. And they have all of that. You know, you, you, you get that designed, you get that approved, all of that up front. And then you build it. So, and then there's, there's everyone else in between. Okay, so, so it, is, it is really a mix of agile and waterfall and, and, and we're, you know, as a small service provider, you need to be flexible in, in that regard. Okay. Uh, rapid deployment. So we know how quickly ERP Next can be stood up, which we love, which we all love. Okay. And clients love it as well. You know, with our clients, you, when you tell them, if you click a button and then two minutes later, your ERP system, everyone loves it. But I see ERP systems like, um, like buying a car, all right? And, and let's say we buy a particular model of a car. And Miguel, you like, what car do you like? Aston Martin. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Miguel likes an Aston Martin. Now, every car can be customized, right? But the core part of the car, the engine, the chassis, the, the frame, that all, that, all stays, that all remains the same, right? So they can push out a standard black Aston Martin V12, blah, 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 right? The, 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 the core of it can be pushed out very, very quickly. But what do, customer, what, what do clients want now? Clients actually nowadays want customization. Miguel likes it in black. I like it in red. Tom likes it in yellow. And, you know, we like different shades of it, just like what uh, Eric showed us before with the, uh, with the earphones, you, you know, half glitter and that sort of thing. So then the question is, oh, can we do rapid deployment with mass customization for our clients? You know, we want our... Eric's done a fantastic job with that website. That looks nothing like anything we do. Agnes, you need to talk to these guys. But um, you know, this is a you know, this is a sort of customization that every client wants. They want to stand out. They want to be individuals and that sort of thing, right? But the fundamental underlying system is exactly the same. So you can rapidly deploy all of that. But then the, 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 the trick is, how do you rapidly deploy all of that and then put the customization, put all of the you know, the individuality of the, of the company in that. So that's what we're trying to do. And that's what we've tried to do. And, and, and you know, we work with uh, web designers and, and web developers and, and, and all that to do that and, you know, do a bit of customization. So what are the, what are the type of um, customizations that, that um, people are looking for? So obviously localization, okay, that's a, that's a given for, um, for your, your, your uh, regional areas. Uh, anything specific to that client or, or to that particular industry. Um, things like integrations, uh, regulatory and statutory requirements for, for, the, for the country. Uh, data analytics, operational technology. So these, these are ideas that I have in my head and, and, and our company has in our head for, for all the service providers to think about, for the community. To, to think about, right? Um, and it, it's, it all is, is around really making a product, an ecosystem, uh, whatever you want to call it, as, as uh, to push it out as fast as we can, but really tailored for, for your client, okay? All right. So, in the, uh, we, we've done some customization. Um, I wouldn't say it's as uh, great as great as everyone else is doing. It's actually quite a, a humbling experience being here because being in the developer workshop yesterday and seeing and, and today and, and seeing what everyone else has done, we thought, wow, wow, well, you know, <laughs> we've done some pretty good work, <laughs> and uh, and today I've just been completely shut down. <laughs> um, so, I'll give you two of our customizations. Um, 
which is one is really just uh, around some localization we did for for Singapore. Uh, we're we're headquartered in Singapore, so uh, we customize the salary slips and payroll for for Singapore. So we're going to put that back into the community. So if there's any Singaporean service providers here, Justin, wherever you are, you know, take that and then roll it out to to your um uh, to your Singaporean clients. And what we'd like to do is you know maybe work with you. Uh, Andy to look at the Australian tax or Miguel for the Ecuadorian and Brazilian and South American tax and Dom for the German tax and that sort of thing because we've we've done the, the basics right and it's easy just taking this now and just tweaking it for all of the different requirements for uh, for the other countries um, I like this one and we're really we're, we're gonna put this on back to the community once we've um, made it look better and <laughs> Uh, tested and all that, but uh, the guys have managed to build an organizational hierarchy um, out of the uh, positions and the employees. So um, uh, we built a customization where uh, you can actually just search, pick a pick a position or pick a, a person in your organization, um, and it will tell you who reports into you. So if you pick the CEO. It'll give you a um, a chart, an org chart of your entire organization, okay? And it gives you some details of their position. It takes the uh, employee information, gets their picture, uh, and gives them details of. So this was this is a what we think is a is a handy um, a handy tool uh, for approvals, for um, uh, for reporting, or, or, or whatever. Just um, uh, and it it, it renders. Uh, it, it just um, creates the, the the chart automatically, so uh, we will definitely contribute this one back back for the community. All right, uh, and then lastly, I guess uh, just a just a bit about us. Um, really, our vision um, is to connect people, inspire people um, to really succeed in in, in in what they do, and I think that's aligned with. You know this whole community effort that that's that's going on with um with ERP Next, and it's it's one of the other reasons why we we wanted to work with Frappe as well because they're aligned with our culture, they're aligned with uh, uh, our values as well. Uh, and our mission is really just to to get out there um, as much as we can. Um, SMEs need help. They all need help. The big companies they have. Deloitte and and Accenture and, and they can pay the exorbitant rates for for the consulting firms, but SMEs can't. Okay, and small businesses, even medium enterprise businesses, they can't. Um, you know, Andy is an accountant, but he's developing, right? This is the, the this is the this is where we come in. Um, me with my experience from corporate. Uh, I'm sure everyone there's entrepreneurs in the house and all that sort of thing. I think I think we need to all come together and and, and really help the uh, the SME community, the, the small business, small medium enterprise community, um, because they're the backbone of society. In most countries, I don't know what the exact stats are, but in Singapore, for example, 95% of all companies are SMEs. 95%, which means they hire, employ 80% of the country's employment. Right? And I'm sure that statistic is replicated in, in, in all the other countries. So as service providers, I think we all need to come together. I think, I don't know, Rashad, maybe we can talk about setting up a, a community for service providers or businesses or, or whatever. I think we, we, we touched on it a bit yesterday because we have a great forum for developers and, and, and technical stuff. But even I must admit when I go into the forum, I'm scared. Because there's just so many things to look at, I don't know where to start, and that sort of thing. So, we need to. I think we need to to set up a forum for non-technical people, um, business people, um, to really put their ideas in. Um, you know, as a service provider, I'm more than happy to impart this sort of knowledge. You know, how to do great implementations, um, how to put together a good plan, how to put together a um, a project plan. These sort of things. You know, all the all the uh, non-technical skills, which I think is just as important as, as having the, the, the technical part because you can have a great product, 
But if you can't get it out there and if you can't successfully implement it into companies, then the product kind of fails by default. Okay, so I think it's a, it's, it's a big responsibility on, on, on all service providers, even the guys who do it internally. It's a big responsibility on your part because your client is the business, is your, is your, you know, your business. You know, we, ha as, uh, we have a bit more responsibility because we have a lot more clients. That's all. That's the only difference. All right. Um, and that's it. So I'm also here till tonight. So if you have anything else you uh, want to talk to me about, please come and uh, give me a, have a chat with me.